welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chelsea Scalona and I'm a digital illustrator. A few weeks ago, I made a poll in my Instagram account with some Q&As that you want me to answer about starting a business, which is kind of a serious that I have been vlogging here. And today I have prepared a video for you answering some of the questions you guys sent. First of all, I wanted to tell you how happy I was that so many of you took the time to leave so many interesting questions about starting a business and I think these are doubts that every starting business owner, artist, creator might have. I will try my best with my own experience to answer them based on what I have done or what I have researched. As some of you might know, I have been a freelancer for quite a few years now, but I started to pursue my artist career three years ago during the pandemic. From that time, I already wanted to have my own shop and make products out of my illustrations and even though I tried back in the day, it did not work and I had to put that goal on hold and wait for a better moment to try it again. Finally this year, one of the goals I set for myself was the opening and launch of my online shop which happened last July 15th, in case you want to check it out. And all this has been a huge roller coaster for me and the ones around me. And even though I made a video where I list for you all the materials, resources and equipment that I am using, which I will leave you somewhere here, I will leave the link in the description box for you to check it out if you want to. There are still a few topics that were not covered in that video and I will try to answer here for you today. Please keep in mind that I can only speak from my own experience and that you, knew you do need to do your proper research about the country that you are living in and the conditions to start your own business there. But even when not all gloves fits all hands, there are still some common points that might serve you as a guideline if you just don't know where to start. So let's dive into the questions. So the first question is kind of a tricky one. I'm guessing you're asking a question about the sites or the platforms where you can set up an online store. There are many websites where you can start to sell your art online, like Society6, Redbubble, Etsy, Tpublic, among others. Every platform may have slightly different procedures for registering and start to selling your art as merchandise. But in general terms, the process involves sort of like creating an account, setting your store or shop, loading your artwork, and finally adding product descriptions and pricing. The other options are e-commerce platforms, where the most popular are um, Shopify, Squarespace or even Wix. These platforms, on the other hand, allows you to be the sole owner of the shop and to manage what your clients see, plus all the benefits goes to you. The only thing that they might take is a small transaction fee for every purchase that are made through their website. So it will be up to you to do some research on those platforms and maybe choose based on your conditions and your context which might work best for you. Now to be recognized in the market, in my own humble opinion, it's important to showcase your unique style and brand through your artwork and merchandise. By this I don't necessarily mean having one fixed style. Your brand can be about a specific topic or niche or it can be built around you as an artist. And all this translates better if you know what makes you unique and what is that you're offering to others. Now, on the product sites, this can be creating a collection on a specific topic like art businesses or mental health or positivity in life or specializing in a specific type of merch like pin making, stickers or prints. And of course, you should use high quality images and engaging descriptions. Easier said than done. But if you manage to tell a story that your audience can relate to, you will probably connect with some audience that will understand you and relate to you and maybe even support your work. Finally, you will need to promote your work on some social media channels. It could be any platform of your choosing and you can either use an established account or maybe start, start one from scratch. These days, relaying on social media only has become kind of the standard of the industry, but with the platforms making so many changes and making it difficult to reach new audiences or even your own already established audience, the artist has been kind of having to pivot into find other ways to promote their work and trying to reach new people that might support their art. Like applying to art markets, collaborating with other artists, or trying to participate in collective exhibitions. Additionally, it can be helpful to try to follow other artists that you admire and see what are their strategies and what are they doing to get themselves out there and maybe, maybe learn from their strategies and techniques. 
Building an online presence and engage with your audience is not an easy task, but the effort can definitely help you to gain recognitions and grow your sales in the art market. For the next question, well, it's totally up to you. Maybe if you think that your art works better as a digital product, like commissions, digital calendars, emoji packs, digital sticker packs, etc., then you should be your store around that type of product. Or maybe if you are like me, my art works best to decorate spaces or apparels, to be on books or editorial publications. So I have built my online store around these type of products, physical products. I don't know much about the digital scenario, but you should find a way to send the file to the customer once the payment transaction has been done. It can be through collecting their emails or messaging directly on social media. It's a decision you need to make and see what works in your benefit. For the physical products like pins, stickers, prints, etc., you need to do your proper research about manufacturers or maybe making it yourself. You need to learn about the shipping and mailing conditions on your country and to what countries you want to sell your products to. Also, it's very important that you let your customers know about these conditions on your website, like shipping times, your responsibilities and theirs in the case of a lost package, what type of products you made, etc. The list goes on. It all may sound like a bit of work in principle to figure out all this, but once you have done it, the rest will come out smoothly. So, speaking of orders and tracking payments, in my case, like I have an online store using the Wix platforms, the payments and invoices are automatically registered in my account. There I can keep track of the orders, their content, if they have been fulfilled or if I have yet to prepare them. There I also have information about the done payments if they have arrived to, arrived to my account. So for that size, a bit of the commodity to have these tools to my disposal. The other way is just to check your account where the money should be sent. I am talking, of course, about online transactions. For cash payments, then you will need to set some kind of bootkeeping method and write thing every time that you receive a payment in cash. The most common that I have seen is just to have a Google spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet, depends on what you're using. This, of course, requires you to add the data manually. But I don't really know about other systems to keep track of these things. So if you know about one, please leave it in the comments so we can all find out. The third question was actually one that I was very excited to talk about. First of all, I think it was a very important decision that you need to make as a business owner. I think they are both amazing ways to run a business. Each have their pros and cons. For instance, print-on-demand services often relieve the burden of having to make the products and ship them and package them and some series of actions that relieve time from the creator or the artist to make more art and to work on their designs and to keep track of so many other tasks that as a business owners you need to do. But the downside of these models is that they offer no customization. For instance, if I want that my customers to receive a beautifully designed by me thank you card or a specific wrapping that protects their prints or freebie stickers if I want to offer that. I just cannot do it. So if I wanted to send a package with my brand so that my customers know what they are getting in their, ma in their mailbox or to improve the unboxing experience or even legitimate my own business in their minds, I can do this because they are not pushing to be on the shadows. They actually want that other possible customers to know about their services and to get noticed. So this kind of take away the nice, dedicated customer experience, which is something that I personally like to offer. On the other side, doing it yourself is a daunting task. You need to know about our supplies, materials, shipping and pricing rules, make up the products, have a space in your studio for inventory, invest in equipments with which are not cheap, so many different things to handle that takes time from creating art. So I guess that at the end of the day, you need to check what are your priorities. Is the customer experience an important part of your business? Is the human and personalized touch and the little details why you think that they will make it come back to your store and keep supporting you in time? Or maybe it's just best to dedicate all your efforts to make incredible art and learn and grow faster as an artist while dealing with the least amount of problems on your site. Then this is something that you need to evaluate and see which works best for you.
The last question is a really complicated topic. I could talk about the plan to success mentality, the conscience creation, but speaking for me, the reality is that I like to make art that resonates with me in the first place. Art that I can relate to or that is based on my personal experiences. That can go as far as my imagination and inspiration can take me. Honestly, this is probably not the best or the smartest way to run these type of businesses. Though, because I'm driven by emotion and passion for every piece that I create, it also makes it a more enjoyable journey for me that I am just starting. And I believe that you need to enjoy first what you're doing while you are also getting the hang of it, of doing so many things and manage so many different tasks that are beyond just creating art. Of course, I'm not saying that other creators with more focus on market don't put efforts and passions to their work. Just saying that I actually struggle with this side of the business. So instead, I choose to make art that inspires me and makes me feel proud of. Then if I can see it hanging on a wall or as a wearable piece, I consider to turn it into a product for my shop. So in this case, this means that not every single piece of art I make is product quality. And I don't really rely that much on social media proof because this does not mean instant purchases. Sometimes people, they just like your art and that's how far they will go. So for now, I am focusing on trial and error and seeing which products work or not on my shop. I'm telling you that you could be surprised of what people buy from you, so leave nothing out of the equation. A way of testing this is to move your products, change them, add new ones, remove some, and see what is working best. This of course takes time, but you eventually will learn what is that your audience likes to buy from you and what maybe type of art you should be created if you want to make a more focused effort on making products that will definitely sell in your shop. Of course, I don't rule out the conscious creation of art. I myself have a list of ideas that resonates with me and I believe that it would maybe be a great sticker or a beautiful t-shirt. The next part is to sit down and bring them to life. But in the end, they will always have a deep connection with me. And that is what makes them worthy of being on my shop for others to bring to their life. And I think that will be all for now. I don't want to make this video too long and there were so many other amazing questions that I will answer in future videos. I believe this was a good start and overall covered so many topics about the basics of starting a small business and some common struggles that I myself had when starting my journey. Hope you have enjoyed this video, as always, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for future content, let me know if this was helpful to you, and as always, thank you for watching, bye bye!